Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a little while since I've been on the channel. I have been trying to film, however it's been really cold on the plot and I've just been huddling away in my polytunnel trying to keep warm. Thankfully the weather has turned now, it's much warmer and I am so excited today because I'm going to give you a tour of everything that's going on on the plot. Before we dive into this video, if you haven't done so already, I'd love to have you along for my growing journey. Why not hit the subscribe button down below and join the community? Whether you're a new gardener or someone who's been gardening for a long time, I always aim to give you something out of these videos, so that's inspiration and tips, or maybe just a lovely little story and an update so you can see what I'm growing as well, in case you're wondering what you can put in the ground. There's also some very advanced kind of stuff going on as well. It's just a really nice community to be a part of, sharing ideas and exploring where we can go and how we can make our vegetables the most productive and delicious that they can be. Starting at the bottom, the shed's just over there. I'm gonna show you all the things that are going on here. There's not a lot that's happening at the minute. Um, I still need to do a lot down here. All of my work has been really up the top and in the polytunnel as well. So the gooseberry bush needs really heavily cutting back um, and I'm actually going to prune it back as well because it's just so mad. Um, my blackcurrant that I planted about five years ago is doing really well and it's looking quite healthy now. I need to give it a good little feed as well. My blueberry is coming back to life which is mad so that's over here. Um, and I've got some shoots on it. I thought this was dead, but it's actually still alive. So I'll treat that well this year. Um, rhubarb that I planted there, very good. The pears are in flower. And actually, the fruit is setting now. So I just have to hope that a frost doesn't get all of that. This is my brassica area. That whole area there, I've kind of just given up with for a bit. I'm gonna get all my compost that I'm making. So there's a big pile over there. I've got one started just at the top there, and then I've got compost over there and in the polytunnel too. But over here, we've got kale in at the minute, so that'll come out soon. And I'm just gonna, like I said, just sort this area out, clean out all the weeds, and get it ready to go for about May, June. I'm not too fussed right now because, um, I've got other things to, to do, um, but this is all going to be for sort of autumn and winter crops again. Garlic is coming up now, it looks fantastic. Um, I am a little bit worried because there's Allium leaf miner, but I think it's been here before and it's been fine anyway. Potatoes are starting to come through, so I'm just earthing them up. Um, and what I'm doing is no dig with the potatoes, so I'm just piling compost on top of them um, just to shut out the light and, and to help sort of the shoots as well, so you get more potatoes. Under this netting, I'm doing something very different this year, so I'm netting all my peas, and they look quite good actually. So, just under here you can see some of these are starting to come up now. Um, this is amazing, I've never had them like this before. So, um, I think the trick was to get them out early, so I let them germinate, um, and I grew them on to probably about a couple of inches, so they are probably about this big, and then I planted them out. I'm really excited. The tulips over there look fantastic. I've got sweet peas growing up this thing as well, hopefully. Cut back all the raspberries, um, which look a lot healthier now. Um, although I do need to take some of them out because they are looking a bit leggy, so some of these don't look very productive, so I will take some out. Broad beans, a bit so-so. Um, this plant here is doing quite well. These are Bunyard's Exhibition. No, they're Aquadels Claudia. These are the Sutton, and then they're all right. Uh, they've had a lot of frost damage, so these went out earlier and they didn't do so well. And then these went out a bit later. This next section I've been very busy on. I'm trying to get it ready to launch a small space garden again. So I've got lots of pots, lots of compost to put in the pots, and I want to get carrots, um, courgettes and things growing in these pots. Lettuce as well, so I've got lots of that. I can put them in, in these containers and, and sort of show you how you can grow so much in a small space. Trombocino will drape down over these um, of the support here. This is an old climbing frame that I've had for ages and I've been looking for things to do with it. And then what will happen is the fencing will go along here. And I just need to tidy this up again so I've got bone weed coming up and brambles. 
a nice little small space bed. This whole area will just be full of small space garden crops that, again, you can grow on a balcony or in a, just a very small garden. We come to the space that I've been spending most of my time in the last couple of months, especially in this colder weather. Um, probably not so much when it's been very warm. Um, but I've been doing lots in here just to try and get my crops along. So this year's been really weird because April's been quite cold and the nights have been really nightmarish to kind of deal with. Um, usually I don't plant my plants out until about late May anyway. Such so things like tomatoes, chilies and aubergines. But this year I have started them a little earlier and I wanted to get them out around now because the last frost date, predicted frost date, is usually around the end of April for Bristol. However, that is not happening and I've started my plants and they're looking a bit sad and they need some space to grow in outside. So what I've done is I've built some hotbeds. We'll start over here with the winter salads. These are Mitsuna. They did phenomenally. Um, we've got Claytonia over here. We had golden and purple frills over here but they're gone now. Actually the golden frills you can just see there. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving a few to let them go to seed. End of this year I'll be growing these um, seeds again um, which would be great apricots over there tucked in nicely and the figs over there as well and what's keeping this polytunnel a bit warmer is these hot bins I've just built this one today the plan is to put my melon so I've got a big melon that I need to put outside very soon I just need to get it into a bigger space really because it's growing really tall so I'm going to put them on top of this heap and maybe put some hoops over the top and then they'll grow in there until it gets warmer outside and I can start moving them out into the polytunnel. My ethos this year is to be as self-sufficient as I can be but it's also to enjoy and grow what I want to grow. I've, I'm throwing out all those vegetables I really don't want to grow, which is very few actually. Um, but I'm really trying to go stress-free about it all. And I, I, going big on the squash and the tomatoes as well, I really put a lot of attention and focus into choosing heritage, interesting varieties of tomato, and really interesting varieties of squash too. So they're gonna look great in the pots. And then everything else is kind of, you know, it's just a bit of color here and there. There's some really good taste and flavor as well. Everything should taste very flavorsome this year. And it's gonna be beautiful and fresh when I get it home. Lockdown has definitely helped me focus my attention on what I actually want to do with this space. Um, <laughs> For years and years I've been recording these videos and saying I'm going to do this, this and this and I get maybe two or three jobs done. This year my focus has been entirely on this because I haven't been able to do anything else. So it's been great to actually get around, clean the beds out, get some more compost made. I, you know I am obsessed with compost now. There is so much compost going on. Um, <laughs> I can't see anything for the compost. Things that I've really mastered this year are potting on, so I've been making sure that none of my plants get too pot bound because it's really affected them in the past. If you lose one or two weeks to slug damage or pot, you know, roots being bound in pots or wilting or whatever, you know, that's going to set them back and your harvest is going to look further and further in the distance. So by focusing on these things and give, lockdown giving me that kind of time to look at those things as well, it's helped to make my harvest more successful. Things like having the beetroot growing and bulbing up, that has never happened to me before. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you can take some inspiration away from it too. And do let me know about your plans and what you've got going on in your gardens too. I'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to check out any more of my videos, you can find them over here. But that's it from me for now. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.